Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, welcome to this session. We are here to talk about adult learners. Uh, my name is Emily Ruska. I'm one of the three network organizers uh, for the conference here. Welcome again to everyone for, for, thank you for joining us. Hopefully folks have been um, just thinking about everything that was shared from the Lumina Foundation about national work and thinking about what it means to engage adult learners for success. Today, we've got um, a great lineup for this conference here and for this session in particular. We've got Christina Warnon for Warden from the uh, from Women Employed, who's the director of policy and programs there. She'll kick us off to talk about what we've got going here today to learn from some specific um, institutions here in Illinois about the kinds of work that they're doing to re-engage adult learners. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to Chris and um, let you take it from here. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am going to screen share, get some slides up here for you really quickly. Um, please just nod your head or give me a thumbs up if you can see the equity first see slides. Yep. Um, also joining me today are going to be, and now my slides don't wanna move, okay. Hey. It seems to be frozen on the sort of just like general open window. Yes. And it seems to, to be determined to stay there as well. Let's try this again. Um, if it doesn't move in a second, I'm just gonna keep going. And you know, you'll always have access to the slides afterwards um, because the conference is so good about making sure that recordings and slides are posted really quickly. And so just to introduce myself, I'm the Director of Policy and Programs at Women Employed. Women Employed is a nonprofit policy and advocacy organization. Our mission is to improve the economic status of women and to remove barriers to economic equity. We, because education is still one of the best economic advancement tools, we work with colleges and universities across Illinois to develop and implement policies that support the advancement of adult students, particularly those who are from low income backgrounds. And we focus on policies and programs for black and Latinx women. So I will be joined today by Dr. Gloria Gibson, the president from Northeastern Illinois University, Star De Los Santos, the senior coalition manager at Women Employed, and Faith LaSure, the dean for admissions at Wabanzi College. And each of them will tell you a little bit more about themselves and their institutions as they move into their presentations. I wanted to start, I see that maybe I'm just on a time delay here. Um, I pulled up, I stole the screen share from you, Chris, um, and pulled up did. the PDF oh, you had sent me, but you. welcome cool. if, if, um, if someone else has the PowerPoint version to pull that up as well, we, I can stop sharing, but. Okay, no, this is excellent. This is fine, Emily, thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna fly through these next slides. Um, just wanted to do a little bit of level setting on data about adult students and who we're talking about when we talk about adult students. So adult students are students who are age 25 and older. This represents a third of all under, undergraduates. Um, and these are national statistics, not Illinois specific statistics. Um, roughly 52% are enrolled part-time and also 52% are enrolled in public two-year institutions. 44% of these adult students are working full-time and another 24% are working part-time. So two thirds of them are at a minimum balancing going to school and working. I'm sure many of them are also balancing family caretaking responsibilities and other responsibilities as well. But this presents a unique challenge to the institutions in terms of how they seek to recruit and serve these students. So in this session today, you'll hear from two institutions that are, that are ahead of the curve in their work to recruit and serve adult students. Um, I wanna share something really quickly in the chat before we get started. I'm going to put a link in here. And this link is something that we call an idea sheet. Um, if you click on that, it will take you to a Google document. 
And what you will see in the Google document is some of the questions that we asked ourselves as we were putting the session together. And then there will be common, um, columns where you can make comments and you can propose ideas yourself. Um, the reason that we tend to do this when we do presentations, as we all know, a lot happens in the chat for a presentation and you don't always have, goodness, I tested this this weekend and it worked. Um, I, I will find a way to get you that idea sheet as soon as we move to STAR. Um, but we like to have, have folks have something they can take away where everything doesn't get captured only in the chat. Um, so once I'm able to get you into that idea sheet, you can include their ideas that you're getting from the presenters today. Also, if you have ideas from your own campus that you wanna share there, um, you can do that as well. And with that, I am going to pass the presentation over to Star De Los Santos, who's had some experience working with adult students and trying to help them overcome the barriers um, that they face in re-engaging with higher education. So talk about some of the things she's learned about the needs and the challenges. So Star, I'm gonna pass it over to you. And Star, feel free to just let me know what slide to get to and, and when to keep moving. Sure, sounds good. I can also share my screen, no worries. I have I have my slides. Why don't we go ahead and do that so we can you can get get your pace right? Cool. All right. Can you all see my slides? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Star de los Santos. I am the senior coalition manager at Women Employed. So excited to be with all of you today. Um, just a little bit about myself. I am Puerto Rican and Dominican, and I grew up in Washington Heights, New York. Uh, my father's a musician, so we moved a lot, and I mean a lot, <laughs> before ending up in Chicago. Um, I grew up in a low-income household with many dreams, but unfortunately little confidence that I would see any of them fulfilled. It just didn't really seem possible, you know, that a kid from the Heights who moved from city to city uh, would see the world or let alone go to college. However, I'm lucky enough to have a mother who was determined to see my dreams come true. She educated herself on the college application and financial aid process to ensure not only I had a high quality, quality education, but she did as well. I attended Northeastern Illinois University in 2007. I was a traditional college student who had barriers to overcome to gain access to a high quality institution like NEIU. Once I was in, you would think the barriers would stop, but they didn't. Uh, there came one after another, and I continued to overcome them until six years later, I could proudly say I obtained not only my bachelor's degree, but my master's as well. Not too bad for a kid from Washington Heights. Not too far after me, my mother went back to college in her 50s, and yes, to Northeastern. So there was a time that I went to school with my mother and attended the same classes in the same building, um, and it's what every kid wishes for, right? But nonetheless, I was really proud of her for taking that step and I became her biggest supporter. While I was a traditional student who faced barriers that made the college process difficult, my mother also faced those obstacles, but other ones too that were unique to her as an adult student. She overcame them and proved the impossible is possible with determination, access to resources, and a supportive academic community. Since then, I've worked in various positions in higher and secondary education, I've seen the struggles and the barriers first generation and adult students constantly face when trying to obtain a college degree. Adult students like my mother are a unique population of students with a different set of needs than traditional students. Today, I will dedicate time to speaking about a few of those barriers I have seen um, during my time. So many adult students, they wanna go back to college, but they're afraid they won't be successful in obtaining their college degree. Many have prior negative experiences, and remember the challenges they had, whether it was the work itself, the time management, or other personal struggles. Others simply just doubt their ability to succeed because they believe that they've spent so many years out of the classroom. And with new technology and processes being put in place, they feel that they won't be able to handle the workload on top of the million of other things that are going on in their lives. Some also worry about just feeling out of place in a classroom filled with students much younger than them. Overall, many doubts go through someone's head when deciding whether or not to go back. And it also doesn't help if you lack support from family and friends. So my wife is 35 years old and will be graduating with her associate's degree from the City Colleges of Chicago this spring. 
And my goodness, believe me when I tell you, she was never going back, like ever, right? Um, she went twice before when she was younger and she was unsuccessful both times. Um, and every time the topic was brought up, she immediately, immediately changed it. Um, one day her CEO presented her with the opportunity to go back for free. And will you believe she still said no? And she said no, because she felt like her time passed. She was already 13 years into her career. She didn't think she could manage it with her current schedule. She had all these doubts until one day she made the leap and decided to go back. They say third time's the charm, right? The impossible turned possible because she had the financial assistance, support from family and loved ones, and options that fit her schedule. So I would like to talk a little bit about accessibility. So it's no secret that college costs a fortune and many adults do not have the financial means to pay for school out of pocket or can afford to go into student loan debt. With high childcare costs and some earning low wages, many students do not know where to begin when it comes to financial assistance. On top of that, many adults who have some college experience and no degree may have outstanding balances at their previous universities and have no ability to pay for it. And therefore they're prevented from re-enrolling or obtaining a, co a copy of their transcripts until that balance is paid off. I saw this issue a lot when I worked for a program called Complete the Degree Chicago. It's just barrier after barrier that adult students encounter. And without proper guidance, they can quickly become discouraged and decide not to continue with the process of going back. Another one of the most significant issues that come up for working adults, in my opinion, is time. They need to care for children, spouses, family members. They work full-time jobs. Many of them work multiple jobs simply to provide basic necessities to their families. It's a juggling act. Those who attend school or who are able to attend school do so part-time and they have to find creative ways to fit their schoolwork into their schedules. Even today's traditional students have some of these obligations and have to juggle with multiple things at once. The solution is to find a program with a more flexible format which usually means one that isn't full-time or on campus. Online learning is an excellent example of a flexible format, and for the most part, asynchronous, which allows students to log in and out and attend classes whenever it's convenient for them. Whether that's early in the morning, the middle of the day, the middle of the night, they make it work for their unique schedule. And night and weekend classes for those who wish for an in-person setting are also a great benefit to adult students. I also personally believe that there's an issue of accessibility regarding the on-campus resources. Because of the limited time adult students have, they are just taking, or they're just taking classes online, they may never know what resources are actually available to them on campus. So while many universities do offer night classes, by the time adult students make it on campus, most of those offices are closed. Services like the Career Center are often not utilized as they should due to the lack of knowledge that they exist or the limited office hours that they offer. Also, there aren't many activities at night or in general tailored to adult students to provide them with a chance to meet others who are going through the same challenges. And in general, just provide a space to give them a sense of community. There's also a debate about how college success is defined. Some people believe that gaining access and graduating with a college degree is success, which no doubt it is. However, I believe obtaining a degree and taking advantage of all the services and everything a college campus has to offer will prepare students with the skills to navigate the world with confidence and live fulfilling lives. In my final slide, you will see an image of student Bob Dwyer, who graduated from NEIU in 2019 at the age of 90. This is another great portrayal of how the impossible is possible, despite the doubt and everything that comes with it. Something that Bob said that stood out to me was the following. I really have a great admiration for Northeastern students. Some of them work two or three jobs on top of going to school and raising a family. That's not easy. I really, really have a lot of respect for them. Bob knows firsthand being an adult student isn't easy. And he witnessed this on campus as well among his peers. The issues that I've, I've discussed today are just some of many that adult students encounter and could be resolved with universities rethinking their strategies and implementing practices that help alleviate some of these burdens. My mother, my wife, Bob, 
and the hundreds of adult students I have had the honor of serving, at one point all believed that going back to college as an adult to obtain a degree was impossible due to self-doubt and what it seems like endless hurdles they needed to overcome along the way. However, they all proved that with the support of adult community on college campuses, access to financial resources, knowledge about additional resources on campus, and flexible schedule options, the impossible is possible. And not only can they succeed in obtaining their degree, but they can uplift their families and communities to do the same. Thanks so much, everyone. And thank you, Star. Um, I wanted to let folks know that Dr. Gloria Gibson is actually having some problems connecting, um, which is why Emily is off camera right now. They are on the tr phone trying to get her connected to the session. Um, given that, Faith, I'm going to ask if you mind going next, and then hopefully we'll solve the connection problems by the time you're finished. Sure, my pleasure. Not a problem. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen then. Um, and But real quick, I'll introduce myself. My name is Faith Lashour. I'm the Dean for Admissions at Wabonzi Community College. I've been at Wabonzi, oh gosh, this year will be my 20th year, kind of nerve-wracking. Um, but yeah, real excited. Um, I love the community college mission and vision. Um, like like STAR, it's so interesting. Um, my my passion really lies in, in the adult journey because of my personal experiences. And so it's, I, I don't know, there's a message about strong mothers today. I, I don't know. I'm feeling it. So um, similarly, I grew up in a household where it was just my mom and I, and I watched her go back to school um, while I was in high school. And she really just really modeled that for me. And one of the things she inspired me to do was pursue my education and pursue it as much as I could while I was still in school, because I watched her hold down these jobs and be a single mom and go back to school and do all these things together. And so um, it was community college that helped pave her way. And it was community college that I attended and went to. And it's certainly where my passion is and so I'm proud to work in a community college uh, for that reason. And so um, I'm here today to present uh, on behalf of Wabonzi Community College and tell you some things about what we're doing related to adult recruitment. And before I do that, I do see that Dr. Gloria Gibson has joined us. Um, did you want me to continue to go forward or? Okay, okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead then and uh, share my screen real quick here. Can you all see my screen? Excellent. Fantastic. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Wabonzi. Wabonzi Community College is a four campus network. Uh, we have a campus in Sugar Grove, which is our largest campus, our Aurora Downtown campus, our Aurora Fox Valley campus, and our Plano campus. Um, unduplicated headcount across all three semesters is 11,795, and approximately 63% of our students are enrolled part time, while 50 and 58% are a female and 42% male. And we do have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And like many community colleges, uh, we have a robust offering of career and technical degrees and certificates, which we know are so critical and key to the success, especially of our adult students who are looking for employable skills that they can use quickly um, and obtain in order to either do career retooling or enhance their current job prospects or just to get a job. So over 90 uh, AAS and certificate programs and 16 short career, career certificates. Um, and then 80% of our completers of long-term certificates or AAS programs at Wabonzi are employed um, in career jobs within a year of graduation. And so we've done several things to really focus on the needs of adult students. So, you know, this pres presentation today is really about some best practices, but I have to tell you, we are just beginning our journey here at Wabonzi. And so I really can't wait to see what I could report out to you in a year from now. Um, but the important thing is, and one of the take home messages, at least for, for us, and hopefully that I'll have for you today, is that it's really dedicating and committing the time and resources to, these, to this so important population um, that really needs our assistance. And so the way that we've done that in being very intentional about the service to our adult students is first and foremost through our strategic plan. And so part of this year's three-year strategic plan at Wabonzi did incorporate a piece related to um, recruitment and retention and it, well in recruitment and recruitment and admissions and marketing. Um, we dedicated a piece specifically to adult 
students because it is so necessary. And then we've also dedicated staffing resources to our adult students. So this year, our admissions department did uh, hire and obtain an adult outreach admissions advisor. So, you know, we, we have a robust admissions advisor system. You know, we have seven admissions advisors, but we felt it was very important that one of those positions be dedicated solely to adult outreach because it's different. There are different needs. There's a different population that needs to be served. And we felt that that specialized uh, outreach was, was really important to dedicate. And then finally, we're doing some things at Wabonzi that are directly related to the success of our students because we know um, what is true success at the community college level if you don't have retention, if you're not able to retain your students and help them meet their goals. We can recruit all the students we want to, but we're not delivering on our promise, on our mission, unless we're helping them to get those degrees and certificates. And so those are the three areas that I'm really going to talk to you about today. And the first, strategic enrollment management, a topic close to my heart, certainly. Um, I, I am a member of ACRO and certainly of their SEM, EP, or Enrollment Professional Program. And, you know, it's so important that we look at our data, look at who we are, and tie it to who we need to serve and how we're going to go about doing that. And so as part of our SEM plan and our current uh, committee structure for that SEM plan or strategic enrollment management plan, we have four areas or four subcommittees um, that are working on topics. And one of those four areas areas is an area that I head up, I co-lead with our director, executive director of uh, marketing and communications, Amanda Geist. And so we um, get together and really are looking at what we need to do to be successful from a recruitment stand standpoint. And so our charge, this committee's charge is really to establish those clear enrollment goals for the purpose of achieving optimal enrollment and then incorporating some identif identified institutional methods and tax tasks. And so after, you know, we're, we're about six months into this, um, our committee really ranges from uh, faculty and staff and students. And so in talking about and doing a SWOT analysis of our recruitment, admissions, and marketing, we really honed in on three main strategic imperatives that, this, the, that need to be addressed from this committee. And the first, of course, is to clarify target goals. We've always had targets, but we really need to identify what's missing and what do we need to amplify. The second, and this is what it's all about, and this is why I'm here today, is refine our adult recruitment strategy because there's so much missed opportunity um, at our district and our college to really be able to, to, to take this up, step it up a level and really serve this important population. And that includes using new messaging categories and, and determining what events and collateral we really need to create with that new messaging. And then finally, refine our cross-segment recruitment strategies, specifically in regards to our Hispanic Latinx, Black African American, and first generation college students. And so in clarifying target goals and the data that we need, we really, um, just to give you a sort of a, a baseline understanding, our market segments um, are traditional students and then what we call our in-between students and then really our non-traditional or adult students. And so as we talked about who our adult students were and faculty really um, you know, gave us feedback, on the adult students that were in the classroom, you know, we really identified different messaging segments that we needed to focus on. We needed to make sure that we were tuning into our career changers, our career enhancers, our career starters, and then really look at what those goals are um, and the different goals between career versus transfer. And so, and of course, anytime you start with these types of uh, strategy, uh, you know, initiatives, you really have to hit, we have to have that baseline. So right now we're just even working on collecting, collecting and solidifying the data. We need a real in-depth examination of our adult students, who's enrolling, who's not enrolling, why aren't they enrolling? So we need to look at all of those things. Um, and we need to capitalize on some opportunities that are so rich and so right in our backyard. And that has a lot to do with um, high school equivalency, um, our, our our English language acquisition learners, and then our workforce development students. And so we're, I'm going to tell you a little more, bit of more, more about that in a minute. Um, but again, the other piece that we really are working on for data is looking at who's enrolling and who's not enrolling uh, related to those, those dimensions that are shown there on the screen. And so that's where we're at with SEM. Okay, that's where we're at with, you know, we're digging into the data and then we'll create some strategies and appropriate outreach necessary based on what that data is telling us. But when it comes to boots on the ground and what we're really doing on the admissions side of the house and recruitment, um, you know, we have this great admissions adult outreach advisor and we've really started to create the strategy based on these five things that uh, you can see in the pie chart. So in the first, and, and I can't say enough about it, is our adult education transition. Uh, we have a, a very um, popular adult uh, education program at Wabonzi, um, our language, English language acquisition students 
our high school equivalency students. And, um, you know, we have approximately 800 students enrolled in those programs right now. And, you know, the need to be able to help those students transition, to be able to get, um, you know, employable skills and gain some of those short-term certificates and degrees that we have to offer is really important. And so um, part of that strategy is having our admissions advisor who's in charge of adult outreach, um, really connecting with those students. And what does that mean? So last week I was just meeting uh, with, with the Dean of Adult Education and, you know, we're talking about what that looks like. And so Priya, our adult outreach person is, you know, going to be sitting there, um, you know, regularly, multiple times a week during those breaks, during, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the break periods for our adult program and connecting with those students, right? Because we really need to formulate that trust that needs to be there so that those students see Priya, they connect with Priya, they start to understand that she's there to help them transition to credit when they're done with their program to be able to help them, um, you know, pursue uh, short-term certificates and degrees for those employable skills. And so that's really the first arm of that. And that includes, you know, not just sitting in that area, you know, waiting to connect with those students, but also going into the classrooms, um, the faculty dedicating time for us to be able to talk to them about transitioning, as well as doing workshops. We have a workshop coming up in the next two weeks uh, that we're also um, uh, coordinating with financial aid to talk about, you know, submitting FAFSA or the alternative app. And so doing all of these things to really um, make a strong effort in helping those students be successful. Um, and the second area, very, very similar to that, is our community education and workforce development. You know, we already offer some non-credit programs here at Obanzi, um, and so we want to really capitalize on that and be able to say, hey, what else do you need from us that we might be able to help you obtain, um, whether it's non-credit or credit? And so we're building bridges with that group uh, of, of students who are in that area to be able to help them transition. And then we have many other opportunities that some people might be familiar with in your own institution. Um, you know, again, boots on the ground, uh, employer fairs, churches, libraries, meeting our adult students where they're at and being able to talk to them about how we can help them pursue their education and their dreams. And then our website request for information inquiries. So we do have a, a CRM, a customer relationship management system. We use Salesforce at Wabanzi. And we've been able to program, if you will, um, those leads that come in. So for students who are 25 plus, they automatically get assigned to our admissions adult outreach advisor, Priya, and she does that follow up um, with all of those leads to help them through the process. And then finally, we're really digging in and starting to examine where we can capitalize more on our community partners and agencies. You know, we have long standing relationships with many community partners, um, partners that we do referrals to from our counseling and advising department, for example, um, and partners that we do, um, you know, we work with employers in the district for job fairs and other things. Things. And so, you know, taking the time to do that boots on the ground uh, experience again, meeting with them and being able to reach out to their, um, their guests, their customers, and be able to really show them the opportunity of what Wabanzi has to offer. So, um, you know, we often uh, are referring out, and so we know that our adult students need to be connected to resources to help them be more successful. And like many community colleges, uh, we have many referral services that certainly help to serve that need. So TRIO and Student Support Services and our Access Center for Disability Resources, and then a real exciting, um, a new opportunity that's part of a Title V grant that we have here called the LRC or the Latinx Resource Center. And so this is just the first year within that Title V grant. And um, we're developing this very, this really cool space at our Aurora downtown campus that specifically the mission is to connect and reach out with our Hispanic Latinx students and really form that space um, where they can get some additional assistance and just connect and be um, you know, assisted and feel like they're part of the community. And so I think that that's like a real exciting part of what we're doing. Um, we're doing some other things too, but that's just a part of it. Um, student life, we already talked a little bit about student life and connecting students to student life. Um, and that includes too some of our leadership development programs. Uh, we have uh, an adult learner that's part of our uh, student ambassadors in our new student orientation that came to us from our leadership program in student life. And she's fantastic. And she serves on this panel at new student orientation and talks about, you know, how how she's a mom of five and she's doing it all and she's working and she's taking classes and how she best does that and she shares that story and those testimonials with our new students who are just getting started at Wabanzi it's powerful stuff and so then really strong advising support is key to that and critical to that too so at Wabanzi our admissions uh, advisors do first semester advising so we believe in in taking students all the way from that inquiry to registration for that first semester and then we hand them off to an assigned case management um, academic and career 
Care Advisor in Counseling and Advising. So, and so we are working on this new um, model at Wabonzi in partnership with a group called Inside Track and also Kale. So it's, it's like this partnership between the three of us that we're working on to do some assessments here and to implement some stronger coaching, as well as take a look at how what our adult services are and, and where we need to improve. And so I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I know it's like a lot. It's a lot to cover. So I probably need to move it along. I'm probably talking too much. So um, so I mentioned that we are working with Inside Track and Kale on some really great stuff, because again, what is recruiting students if we're not retaining students, if we're not helping them to reach their goals? Because that's what it's all about. That's how you change lives. And so this new coaching model that we're adopting, um, that we're working on with Inside Track, which is a, a national organization that um, works with schools across the country to help them improve and implement a coaching model that's focused on retention. It's very focused on retention. And so this information here um, that's on this slide is about is some data that Inside Track provided for us from other coaching across the country um, and really shows the differences between what the challenges are for our adult learners versus our traditional age students. And so and we know, especially at community college, life happens, right? We're all about life happening. We say it all the time and helping our students make it through life happening. And so managing those commitments, that's like the number one challenge, right? Of what students are trying to do and juggle and, you know, family life and their job and on these time commitments and everything. And so we know that's where all the support needs to come from. And so we are uh, working on this project with a special adult and Latinx focus a lens that we're using to do this new coaching model. And so as part of this coaching model and working with Inside Track, we're also partnering with Kale, Kale, the Council for Adult and Experiential Learning. And they, we have used Kale to uh, use their Adult Learner 360 survey to identify those top areas that Wabonzi needs to work on, um, as well as our strengths. And so because we know that we want to be able to improve in the areas that we need to to serve our adult students. So I just gave you a little snapshot here of, of some of the items that came up as strengths for us um, in our adult learning survey student questionnaire and they do two types of surveys they do a student survey and then an employee survey and then they do a gaps analysis to take a look at that and so you know this was some really some some good news to help really encourage I think um, our admissions and counseling staff our academic advising staff um, and so we did get some feedback that we have some wins you know enrolling at the institution and registering at the institution um, that communications with all the outreach that we do so we know we're doing some things right but we know we have things we have to work on too. And so in working with Kale, um, one of the things that we're working on is this: these sets of action plans that we're taking to outline next steps based on all of this data. You know, what are we going to do in order to beef up some of the support that we really need um, for our adult students? And some of that is very much um, that career focus and being able to help tie our students in a stronger way to job opportunities located in the region. And so again, so we're also looking at this from a Hispanic Latinx student lens, um, and that hi those that highlights or includes um, our, our student feedback from that perspective. And so some of the positives that we did get back from our student survey, um, you know, we did get some some positive feedback about regular contact with their mentor and advisor, um, getting the resources and referrals that they need. And so anyway, so this is just you know this is just a starting point, right? Like this is just a starting point for us. We have lots of work to do yet and and a lot to a long way to go um, but we're excited about these initiatives and we just know they're going to make a difference for our students and the data will tell certainly so thanks for your time I know I talked very fast and I probably talked a little long so I'm happy to turn it back to you Chris thank you Faith well it's exciting to see the path that you're on and the many areas that you're focusing on in regards to adult students and both giving them access, but also ensuring their success and retaining them once you have them on the campus. Um, it's my pleasure to next introduce you all to Dr. Gloria Gibson, the president of Northeastern Illinois University. Um, apologies to you, President Gibson. There were some technical issues, so she it took her a few minutes before she was able to join us, um, but appreciate you being diligent and working through that. And thank you, Emily, for your help. Um, at this point, I am going to pass the, you know, pass the microphone to you to talk about Northeastern's work with adult students. Thank you so much, uh, Chris, and thank you for the uh, help in getting logged on, and I do apologize for being late. Um, I will uh, 
give just some brief remarks uh, so that uh, we can, I know there's some other discussion that you want to have uh, this morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about Northeastern. And just for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, Northeastern, um, we have uh, three locations, three primary locations uh, here in North Park. Um, is our main campus. Uh, we also have our El Centro campus in Avondale um, that is open to all students, but primarily caters, caters to our Latino students. And we have a location in Bronzeville, our Carruthers uh, Center for Inner City Studies. And um, I must say that all three of our locations uh, cater to uh, adult learners and uh, have adult learners as a part of our programs. Um, for Northeastern, and again, um, I've been president uh, since uh, 2018. Um, I, I have to, uh, Chris, you took these words right out of my mouth. Uh, our mission is access and opportunity. Uh, and that is for all of our students. Um, and But as a Hispanic serving and a minority serving institution, we also um, have that focus. And we are, I must say, we're also working with Wabanzi uh, Community College to come up with uh, new and exciting ways that our two institutions can partner in the future. Um, diversity inclusion uh, is critical, equity issues critical, and of course when we look at adult learners, uh, we understand that some of their needs may be different. Um, they, the average age of our students here at Northeastern is about 26. So whereas we do have, of course, our first time full-time freshmen, uh, we also have uh, quite a few adult learners. In fact, it's about 50-50. Um, and so we are very um, focused in uh, on our adult learners. Um, not only the recruitment of those students, but making sure that once they get here to Northeastern that they are going to be um, successful. We have um, our adult learners may of course come in through our regular um, admissions process and we welcome them to come in that way. Uh, but we also have two other programs. One is our University Without Walls. Uh, we call it our UWW uh, program. And we also have a Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, what we understand is that for adult learners, it, it, it is um, understanding what their needs are uh, because they're, they're, not, they're not going to be the same as a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old. And having students that are 25 and older, um, we're talking about family, we're talking about income, we're talking about um, scholarship needs, uh, we're talking about student support. All of those become uh, critical for the success of our adult students. Um, and so I just want to spend a few minutes talking about our um, UWW and also our um, program for our, our BS in interdisciplinary studies. One of the ways that you know we uh, retain our that retain those students is through prior learning assessment. Uh, we know that we all um, bring. Uh, valuable knowledge uh, to, um, it, to our classroom settings. And so working with our uh, faculty, uh, we are able to um, provide uh, an assessment of what that prior knowledge might be. Uh, it could be from the military. It could be from their prior work experience. Uh, it could be from a number of areas. Um, and how can we give academic credit 
to those students for that prior learning becomes very critical. Um, I think the other piece that is uh, for us uh, so very important is that for some of our students, they may have been out of school for a year, maybe two years, but maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. Uh, you, you, we, we don't know, you know, we have to find out. And then we also have to find out what their needs are. Uh, and let me just do a quick uh, 30 second uh, info that two, two years ago, no, this was before COVID. So three years ago, we actually had a 90 year old gentleman receive his bachelor's degree from Northeastern. And when he walked across the stage, everyone stood up to applaud him. So continuing education and degree attainment is for everyone. There is no cutoff. Uh, there is no cutoff. So I'm very proud of the work that we're doing. Um, but one of the other areas that we must focus is personalized advising, because it is, and, and actually not even for just our adult students, but for all students, but I'd say for adult students to understand where they are, what their concerns might be, where they need focused attention, and uh, providing that holistic support uh, for our students. And I would say that uh, with COVID and uh, challenges in our black and brown communities, we also need to be sensitive to what are the mental health needs of our students. Um, it is very difficult when families may have food insecurity, housing insecurity, um, illnesses because of COVID, and then that person is supposed to just come to class and, and, and achieve, right? We, we have to look at our students holistically and understand what their needs are. And for us, having that personalized advising uh, becomes critical to student success. Um, I think that the other piece of this for NEIU is that we, for our recruitment, and again, I just hired and I'm so happy that, you know, I finally, this process finally ended, but we did not have a vice president for enrollment management. So just recently we hired a VP for enrollment management and uh, part of her responsibilities going forward will be for us as well to develop the strategic enrollment management plan. You have to have a plan um, and not just sort of uh, here, there and everywhere uh, recruiting, but to do it in a strategic play, a strategic way. Um, we do, I should say, have um, some areas as was discussed uh, with Wabanzi where we are developing those pipelines uh, for adult learners. And one of the uh, places that uh, we have is the um, prison and, and network arts education project, PNAP is what it's called. And through that program, um, we recruit formerly incarcerated students um, through a fellowship program that offers uh, financial along with other academic uh, supports to our uh, returning adult students. Um, and I must say again that I had the honor uh, to go to Statesville a couple years ago before everything's before or after COVID, uh, before COVID for um, a commencement program where we had um, seven uh, incarcerated uh, gentlemen who received their degree from Northeastern Illinois University. And we were so very, very proud of that. And I'm very proud of the work that our faculty and our staff are doing uh, with, uh, within Stateville, but certainly once um, they are released from Stateville, how we can connect with them working with PNAP to uh, get them through their educational um, process. 
So I, I'm looking at the clock while I'm, I'm talking here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up so that we can uh, do our uh, panel. But um, the last piece that I want to mention is um, a career development. Uh, again, uh, when we have adult learners, uh, they, they certainly want to obtain their certifications, their degrees, but they're also looking for that next step. And they don't wanna wait until they have degree in hand for that next step. And one of the best ways to do that is through our career development, which for us is through our student affairs division. Um, and we are working to um, be able to offer our students some type of internship. Um, in so that they get that experience and they understand, um, you know, how to connect the dots between the academic and the experiential, uh, leading to a career pathway. Uh, that for us becomes also uh, very, very important. So I'm, I'm going to stop there, um, but I'm very proud of the work that my faculty and staff are doing. Uh, very proud of the partnerships that we're developing uh, because we know that this is a population that we cannot ignore, that we must embrace um, because they have so much to give to our universities and to our students uh, as we you know, build on the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, President Gibson. Um, I actually would like to ask a follow-up question and this will give our participants a couple moments to put questions into the chat. But I know that um, NEIU is recognized as a leader nationally um, in their rankings every year for serving adult students. Um, I also saw in the news last week that you were once again recognized as one of the top 10 universities in the Midwest in terms of your racial equity and inclusion work. Um, and the fact that you are sort of serial winners of these honors, so to speak, um, says to me that that's not just by happenstance, that you have really done work to ingrain the focus on adults and the commitment to racial equity and inclusion into your culture at the university. Can you talk a little bit about how you go about doing that? Yeah, and thank you. And I, I first want to say that this work started long before I arrived. And so I do have to, uh, you know, give give credit where credit is due. And that is uh, to the legacy of the leadership that has been here at Northeastern. Uh, and certainly, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I was uh, interested in becoming president here is because of that legacy. Um, our, um, we, uh, you know, focus um, a lot of energy and intentionality on the success of our students. Uh, it is it is critical, um, and that you know for for some it has not always uh, been that focus, but it certainly it certainly is for us. Um, and students, it is it is it is critical that students also see faculty and staff that. Uh, that they can emulate that look like them. Uh, and so at Northeastern, again, we're not where we need to be, but we have a diverse um, faculty uh, and an even more diverse staff. And, and so our students can relate to, um, you know, certainly all of our faculty and staff, but it really helps to have faculty and staff of color. I, I would say that another part of the intentionality is we are going after the seal of excellencia, which specifically focuses on uh, Latino uh, students. Uh, and we have a number of what we call success programs um, where we're focusing on, again, looking holistically uh, at our students. For our adult learners, again, I, I think 
you know, we have to be intentional in understanding where they are when they come into the university and what support services uh, we need. I am very, very proud of both of those uh, acknowledgements. Um, and we will, you know, we continue to work uh, to strengthen uh, what, you know, our focus on diversity, inclusion, and equity, as well as um, recruiting and graduating uh, more and more adult learners. Thank you. Um, Faith, I actually have a similar question for you, um, because while you have a very thought out plan, and it engages a lot of different departments at the university, um, I know that often it's much easier to say it and to talk about it than to actually do that work and building those partnerships across departments. So can you talk a little bit about what it took you to bring everyone to the table and get them moving in the same direction to put together your plan? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I, really what brought it together was intentionally tying it to the strategic plan. So, um, you know, my vice president is in charge of strategic development and um, it was very intentional to create these committees that were cross-departmental um, that really engage us in groups um, so we're not operating in silos. And I think re that's really what made the difference. Um, and one of the reasons that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel so good about our, our SEM initiatives is because it takes it to that next level where everybody is paddling together, right? I mean, we still all have lots we want to do. And, you know, we talk about initiative fatigue and higher ed and all these things, but um, we are paddling in the same direction, I'll tell you. There's a lot, there's a lot of boats and there's a lot of paddles, but we're paddling in the same direction. So I definitely attribute it to that, what the work that's been happening that was they, you know, um, forced a structure to make that happen and dedicated the time to make that happen. Thank you. So I see a question from Heather in the chat, and she's asking, what has been the most effective way that you found to communicate with the community all of the resources or programs you have on your campuses? Well, I'll, I'll go first, just give a couple examples. Um, we do have uh, an office on campus that, uh, I mean, it, it is their mission to serve our adult learners. And um, so they know that they can uh, go to that office at any point in time and get their questions uh, answered or go for advising. Um, and, and so to have a kind of home uh, uh, office um, that where students know that they can get the assistance. I think it uh, also helps that uh, for many of our adult learners, um, they need to have access to whether it's a, an office or a person uh, at different office hours. Uh, we can't always just have the, you know, the eight to four or nine to five uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, they may be working, right, from nine to five and, and have uh, other types of, of questions. Um, so we have a dedicated staff um, that will work with uh, our adult learners. Um, we have, uh, our director has other forms of communication, newsletters, that sort of thing, um, where uh, they can um, impart information, especially on scholarships. I think, again, all students are very, very interested in, in funding uh, opportunities, in internship opportunities. So um, we take great pride in being able to provide uh, staff who are dedicated um, to informing in various ways, whether it's, you know, newsletters or online or in person uh, coming to the office that we can keep those channels of communication open. And I'd have to say it's, um, I would say it's a rich mix of um, lots of different uh, mediums. Um, you know, our marketing and communications department, both internally and externally, really focus on using different channels to be able to connect with our community. Um, and so a lot of social media, we're doing a lot of social media outreach um, that really tries to hone in on those audiences where we know audiences are, uh, resonating those messages that, that we feel will hit home. 
um, using testimonials, again, um, of adult students to adult students, right? And so we know that those are great ways to connect. Um, but internally, we, it's, it's a real mix. Um, you know, we have, um, we have an electronic newsletter, but then we also have even these, these posters above the drinking fountains when people are, you know, actually on campus, right? They're called the scuttlebutt. And so they like try to connect people to what the inside scoop is. They change every week. And so they're constantly evolving um, and they like to advertise, our marketing likes to advertise what resources are most relevant that week, right? So as we're coming up to finals, they're promoting and advertising our academic um, support services and tutoring services that are made available to everyone because we want students to capitalize on those resources. So it's really a combination depending on whether or not you're talking about internal or external. I feel like some of our most powerful community um, communication is going to be through our more, I, I talk about boots on the ground, but grassroots efforts. Um, we've got some Title V um, current grant programs that are working that are really, I think, going to be game changers. Um, one of them is a high school transition advisor program where we have uh, transition advisors that are located at the high schools working with freshmen, sophomore, and juniors, um, specifically with those Title V parameters, you know, a primary focus on our Hispanic Latinx populations to help students be college and career ready there in the high schools. And I think it's those kinds of impacts that will start to then build in the community and help to pass along that communication of where we are and what we're bringing to our students. Um, we're starting to just get up with text messaging. You know, everybody talks about text messaging. Um, and so that's something that we're just now really starting to lift off because we want to be smart about how we do that and not just throw texts everywhere at everyone. So, um, but you know, again, it really depends on which kind of um, community we're talking about, whether it's internal or external. Thank you, Faith. Um, I don't see any additional questions in the chat, but if you're not so inclined to use chat and someone wishes to unmute themselves and ask a question, we still have a couple of minutes. So please feel free to do that. While we're waiting on the next question, if I could just say that, you know, my experience has been that uh, adult learners are highly motivated, highly motivated. Um, and because of that, they do um, exceptionally well. Um, if, if you have a family and you want to impact your family or you want to impact your community, uh, you, you are um, looking for those uh, opportunities uh, to do so. Um, and and uh, the last thing I'll say is that to have the mix of adult learners and our, you know, more, if you want to say traditionally age students in some of our classes uh, also provides a win-win because uh, they, they each are learning from each other. And uh, it really, it really uh, enhances uh, the learning environment. Yeah. I know we're running low on time, but I see Dana has her hand raised and there's another question in the chat as well. Well, since we are out of time, I just wanted to, um, first of all, thank you so much for this session. But um, one thing that didn't really get touched on that is a significant barrier for um, adult and continuing and reentry students is the stranded credits issue when they hold institutional debt at former institutions. Um, and I know there's some pending legislation on that here in Illinois. And I just wondered if there's anything that you all wanted to say to address that. So what, what I can say briefly, um, and this doesn't impact uh, students who, um, who may have debt at another institution, but if a student um, has debt at Northeastern, uh, we have uh, earmarked some of our federal funding. And again, we know that's gonna go away, uh, but we have earmarked some of our federal funding for debt forgiveness. Uh, so we will pay up to $3,000 uh, for debt forgiveness, and we also will um, provide a stipend for students that are returning, but these are NEI, former NEIU students, uh, not students from other institutions. 
And I would and just say that um, our foundation scholarships um, are a great avenue for students. Uh, we have a large foundation that awards a lot of scholarships every year, some of them directed specifically at adult learners and adult students, recognizing that the plight of our adult students uh, is, is different. And so that's, uh, I'd, I'd say, where we are um, really, you know, focusing those efforts. Well, Emily, I realize that we've run over by a minute here. Um, I can actually topic. send the presenters the remaining question in the chat for follow up afterwards. Um, but I just want to thank all of the presenters um, for sharing your wealth of expertise and knowledge and experience in this area. Um, Dr. Gibson, Faith Starr, thank you so much. And we look forward to continuing the conversation through the conference um, this week in the chat. I know Emily posted a link to another session that's happening. I think she said later today this or later this yeah. week, this afternoon on mm -hmm. Middle Skills Pathways that you might want to check out to continue this conversation. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Thanks, everyone. And we'll be posting any materials we have for the session, as well as a recording to the conference website as soon as it's ready. So thanks so much uh, to Chris and for all the speakers for your participation today. This has been super informative and just really appreciate everyone's time and look forward to seeing folks at other other sessions throughout the conference. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Have a good day and a Thank wonderful you. week.